That's a lot better. Oh yeah, that works. Let's talk about boost, the magical button of fun. Before we go out and test this thing, let's go over some boost stuff. I'm gonna go over everything I know about it. I don't know any of this stuff, just what I've read and researched. We're gonna put the inputs in, we're gonna go out and test it and see if the research is lies or if it actually works. There's two different versions of the controller. The information online really doesn't separate it. When you look at the chart, here's a version one diagram of where the wires go and here's a version two diagram of where the wires go. They look pretty much identical until you start looking closely. The version one is gonna be different when you do your boost and different when you do your one line connector. The version two will be different on the boost and one line connector also. So this plug here is not compatible with that one because quite a few of the pinouts are different. Over here, the brown wire is a boost wire. The blue wire is your one line or one line connector for the DKD display. But you go to this version two and the DKD display is running off the brown wire. There is no boost wire on this thing. You have to assign it via the app. You move up to a version two controller, the boost is a little bit difficult because you've just used what we thought was the boost line, the brown wire, to run your DKD display. So what we're gonna have to do is assign another one of these pins to be your boost. On this version two, it does not have a pin assigned to boost. And that's what's confusing a lot of people. So if we go into pro, down to functions, here's your boost pin. Mine is invalid, but it has all these choices here. Pin eight, pin nine, things like that, that I can select from. Cruise control is pin 17, reverse is pin eight. So there's all sorts of good options to use, but you have to figure out one you're not using or one you can spare. I've got this reverse switch, it's not that important. I could just reassign this reverse switch to be my boost on this version two here. And here's how I would do it. I would go to the backwards pin, it's set on pin eight right now, number four, pin eight. I would make this invalid, get rid of it altogether. Now that's invalid. Now I go over here to boost pin and I make my boost number four, pin eight, there it is. Now I'm not gonna have this problem because I'm putting on the version one controller that has a boost switch, but if you're moving up to a version two controller, this is what you gotta deal with. So I'm using a version one controller, ND961200, but on your wiring harness, you've got a brown and white wire. That's reverse. That black wire is a ground. When those two touch each other, the bike goes in reverse. When they're not touching, the bike's normal. And how you would make them touch is a button. It just touches the two wires and releases the two wires. There's also a solid brown wire. The solid brown wire is what we use for boost on a version one. The problem is, is there's no black wire associated with it. There's a blue wire with the red stripe on it. That blue wire with the red stripe on it is cruise control. Same thing if you touch it to the black black wire or a ground, it activates it. The brown wire is boost. If you touch it to a ground, it activates it. But we need a black wire in there to touch it to when you press the button. There's a brake button. Let's say you want to have an e-brake. This is your yellow wire with a green stripe on it. It's got a black associated with it. So that reverse and that brake button both have a black wire associated with it. You can steal that black wire, you can jump to it, or you can just steal it and repin it into your boost button. So what I did, I knew I wasn't going to have a reverse on this bike. I didn't want to be confused with a German in this fanny pack and capri pants hitting a reverse button on my bike. I wanted to be cool. So I took that black wire from that reverse button and I replaced it with the cruise control wire. I stuck the cruise control wire on the button the reverse switch was on. So now I've got a black wire and the brown wire for boost in the same connector. This is the part you get from AliExpress and I ran that to the boost button. So when I press that button, it touches these two wires together, black and brown. That's how we activate boost, mechanically. But there's more to it than that. The idea behind the boost switch, we want to ride our e-bike and not worry about temperature, about over-stressing the motor, over-stressing the battery. You just want to ride around like normal, so we want to limit the bike. If we limit this bike, now you may need to watch a tuning video to understand some of this stuff, but real quick. So I've got a 96 1200 controller. I'm at 96 volts. 600 line amps is the max I can put through that. I've got a 96 volt battery, 64 amp hours because it's a 40p. You can use a chart and figure out, if you watch a tuning video, how many amps that's good for. It's good for 320 20 amps continuous now i can peak that thing at 600 amps to match a controller but continuous is 320 the motor 12 1000 watt qs 273 hub motor 12,000 divided by 96 max continuous amps this can take is 125 according to the book 20,000 watt peak max peak amps this can take is about 200 that's according to the book 
motors can be way overdriven. So I'm not too worried about that. I'm more worried about my Chinese battery fire. I'm more worried about damaging my controller. But in theory, if you wanted to limit your motor, you would set your controller for 125 amps, and then you could drive it forever. And you wouldn't overstress anything on this bike. But at some point, you wanna pass a car and you need more. So you wanna use that peak power they advertise. So I know I can go peak way past 600 on this. I know I can peak that to 600. And I know I can peak this to 200. So I would set my boost at 200 line amp and then my max line amps would be 125. And what would happen is when I press this button, I would go from 125 line amps to 200 line amps and it would shoot out like a rocket. The boost function works with line amps and it also works with RPM. I could limit this to a certain RPM and boost would give me more. Let's say the motor is rated for 1000 RPM and it has a peak RPM of 1300. Then I could have max speed at 1000 and when I press the button, I would allow that motor to go to 1300. But I'm gonna do it in just amps. I think that's what most everyone's thinking in, is just amps. All right, we got the electronical portions hooked up. Let's now do the computer logical things. Let's open up the Far Driver app, figure out how to do this. Pro mode, and that back hub motor is my weakest link. 12,000 watt, 20,000 watt peak. 12,000 divided by 96, so I know I'm gonna limit my amps for continuous to, let's say 125. So let's go max line amps, 125. I don't care about the phase amps, you're not gonna reach those anyway we'll make the boost i think it was 208 on the calculator i'll make it like 300 something quite a bit bigger and if you notice max speed i've got set to 3000 that's the maximum the far driver will let you put for a hub motor with the 16 pole pairs the reason i've got mine so high i'll never obtain that if you watch the 0 to 60 video putting 3000 in there for max speed really increased the acceleration because the math the computer is doing to take off is now trying to get to 3000 rpm instead of the old rpm of say 1600 and i'm not talking about rated speed 1510 we need to keep that there that's going to be Found when you do your auto learn don't change that i'm talking about max speed that's going to help your zero to 60 to put that at max Twelve thousand for a mid drive with four pull pairs and i honestly don't want to limit my speed when i'm not in boost i just want to go as fast as this thing can i'm just limited by 125 amps i don't care what the speed is much as I can get. I don't see the need to limit speed and then open it up with boost. Under ratios and speed, there's a limit speed. I've also got that at 3000 RPM. From what I've been told and read, that is the RPM limit when boost is on. So max speed is like kind of like line amps and then boost line current 300 goes hand in hand with limit speed of 3000 rpm and the reason they put that down there is because when you set your ratios up to protect your motor from exceeding an rpm you want that's kind of the whole point of these ratios this thing might be a motocross bike i might be jumping it i'm trying to do a triple the front end drops on me and i want to get that back end down so i stab the throttle when i stab that throttle that wheel's just going to run away i've got to set an rpm limit in ratios so i don't over speed my wheel when it's unloaded in the air boost will do the same thing if i hit boost before i tried to hit that triple i could overspeed that wheel with so i'm going to limit my speed where it says limit speed under ratios and speed we're going to test this i don't know if this is true or not but more importantly we've got to turn this on boost pin there's a chart online that shows what the pins do and when you go to boost pin it makes you think it's pin six but if you notice, under your selections, there are no pin sixes. There's pin five, there's pin eight, there's pin nine. I can't find a pin six. So what I've been told is it's actually selection six, pin 14. That's the correct selection for the boost pin to go to the brown wire. That should turn it on. Now we need to tell it how long to turn on for. This will also be under functions. The first one you select is boost time. How do you know how much time? Gotta watch the tuning video. You're gonna actually just kinda test it. You're gonna watch the amount, the voltage sags, it's the heat of the battery, and you're gonna know how long you can run this battery at those higher amps. Now I just know from doing it before that I can run mine at 15 seconds at 600 amps. I'm gonna leave mine on 15 seconds. And then boost release, there's a penalty time after the 15 seconds, so every Everything can cool back down and I've got 90 seconds I just made that up I haven't even tested this yet so once you hit the button you get your boost for 15 seconds then you have to wait 
in the penalty box for 90 seconds until you can use that boost again and you can select whatever you want in these so in theory this boost should work let's go try it okay you see in this top center the little three that's your gear three you have a three speed i have no gears on this it's always in third gear i've heard it has to be in third gear for the boost to work i can't test that because i don't have a three speed switch on here but if you do have a three speed switch i think it has to be in speed three all right so i've got it set to 125 line amps max so i should be able to get full throttle it'll go right to about 12,000 kilowatt Yep, there's 12,000 kilowatt, and that's all she gives. Now that little three is gonna turn into a BST when I hit boost. It's like we're going about 60 miles an hour almost. Took us a while to get there. Now this time, I'm gonna go full throttle, and I'm gonna want more, and I'm gonna hit boost. Now watch the little three turn into BST, and I get 15 seconds there. So there's full throttle, here's the boost button. There's BST, a little bit of a delay. And now it goes to 23,000 watts. And I'm going way faster, obviously, almost 80 miles an hour there in the same amount of time. So that works pretty cool. But what I want to do to test this thing is I want to put in some super low numbers for the amount of time we can be in boost and the recovery time so I can test it quicker. I'm on this little teeny straightaway. I need it to run out quicker. So we'll go to function. How about four seconds even? Let's make that reset in five seconds. So I've got four seconds of boost. It's going to reset in five seconds. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to see if I can turn the boost back on after I've been boosted while I'm at full throttle. There's full throttle. Here's boost. There's BST. Three. About four seconds there. 23,000. Oh, I'm telling you, it's still going. I had to stop. There's 12,000. Hit the boost. BST. One, two, three. My boost should be over. It's staying in boost. Yeah, I didn't end it all. So I've got three seconds of boost set. And we're going to see what it actually takes. Three, four, five, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I let out the throttle, it comes out, it won't go back into it. So this is not as advertised here. It seems like to me it stays in boost as long as you stay in boost. And it does not come out of boost till I let off that throttle. So I'll need some input on this, on what's going on. Some of you experts out there. So, so far that is not a very good system of protection at all. I'm going to see if I can arm the boost and take off with it. So let me bring that back up to let's say 10 seconds. Can the boost be armed and then take off so you don't have to hit the button with it? Because I'm going to press the boost. And I'm just going to take off within 10 seconds. So that did not work. It didn't arm itself. What I'm going to try now is I'm just going to hold the button down. Let's see, I'm drag racing someone. If I can take off with the button down and the boost comes on. It does not. I release the button does not press it and it didn't okay same test I'm gonna press the boost and then take off just gonna press and release it and it does not go into boost I think even though it didn't go into boost the timer still started from when I press that button all right plenty of time has elapsed I'm gonna hold the button down and take off then I can let go of the button Nothing. Interesting. So it really can't be armed. You're going to have to press the button after takeoff. So also let me know in the comments on that one if you know a trick there. How to make like a better drag race takeoff setup. So you don't have to drag race and then not know where to press that button. This time I'm just going to take off normal and press the button to make sure it's working. Since those two didn't work. Yep, and there's the boost. I'm going to be able to test this RPM boost right here in my neighborhood. So I'm going to set max speed at 300 RPM. And then limit speed to 400. And what I want to see is if boost is dependent on the line current and boost current of 600. 
something way higher than obviously these RPMs, or if I can use boost to get past that 300 RPM limit. 86, 89, yeah, about 300 RPM, that's my limit. Now I'm gonna turn around and see if I can boost myself out of this situation. So I'm at my limit, and I'm gonna hit the boost. It did. It's jumping up to 400 RPM. And it looks like it's not going above 400. So here's the big learning point. In ratios and speed, that speed limit is for boost. And that's it. And again, like I've shown, ratios and speed is not about field weakening, it's about RPM limits. Do not overspeed your motor. Awesome. For the next test, I'm gonna see if it gets stuck in boost mode during the RPM limitation also. So I've got the boost time set to four seconds. All right, here's my limit. I'm gonna hit the boost button. I felt a kick before the boost light comes on. About two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's staying in boost um, way past four seconds. So the whole boost timer thing is kind of a farce. If I let off the throttle, now I give it gas. I'm going to go right back to that 300 RPM limit. Of course, it's still slowing down, but it'll eventually stabilize there at 300 RPM. So that's a pretty fun test, but like everything far driver, it leaves you with some questions that are unanswered. So yeah, if you know the answers to some of those, let me know. This bike is pretty darn cool. Yeah, 600 to boost, that's a lot. Woo. Right now I've got it set 200 line amps and 600 boost. Yeah, the 600 is crazy. It's an e-bike, I can take these bicycle roads.